when I do it continuously, I, I get sexually unstable. He starts by massaging and inserts his entire hand in my vagina. And sometimes I felt his hand in my womb. I think I'm not the first victim, according to the rumor I heard. I believe that is something probably he does to innocent women or wives, people who come seeking medical attention. And it's random, it's not like everyone I see. He came inside and then he asked me. Then things were more intense. He was touching me, kissing my butt, wanting my butt, and trying to find his way inside my vagina. I noticed that he was actually massaging my buttocks and inserting his fingers into my vagina. The next I knew, it was his penis. Um, it comes to me as a surprise. I am not aware of any, you know, condition. And in this case, it's a lumbar spondylosis. Um, I am not aware of any such condition that would require the patient to be sexually aroused before treatment can be administered. No, it's, it is a surprise. Things go on. So I'm really surprised. You're saying it's not true? If it's really true, I should be in jail by now. In 2018, Ifwa, a 30-year-old banker, not her real identity, was introduced to a specialist when she and her husband needed a child. The couple had suffered a traumatic loss and hoped this specialist would help restore their joy. We have here Dr. Jonathan Ohinin Inkumi of the Nature's Hand Therapeutic Center at Bali. Doc, welcome to the show. Initially, I was kind of reluctant since I didn't really know how he used to operate. I decided to give it a try. I was there at the clinic and actually he doesn't do the normal diagnosis that you'll be asked to do a lab and those things. He actually has a way. He checks. I don't know whether your pulse or something behind your palm, which looks strange, but that's how he's able to tell if you have a condition or not. He said he learned it in China. There's the back of the hand and it has like 360 points. Okay. There, so if I want to check there, so I want to check how, how you sleep, so I check the pulse and the nerve points. And... Uh, okay, so what are you checking out? I'm checking your sleep ratio, actually. My and sleep your, ratio? Yes. Okay, and? Four hours, 35 minutes, give or take 10 minutes. Yesterday? Yes, last night to this morning. This guy's a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't because I didn't sleep early. Oh, I, okay. I, I, yeah, I stayed up late because I was working on a, a script. So, and today your eating has been a bit off. You've, take, you've taken a lot of water, which is good, but your yes. eating is yes, I've taken a lot of water today, yes. and I've, I, I just, I've just eaten once something okay. very little. Okay. Okay. That's all in all, you have a very good pulse. Your heart is very, very good. My heart is good. Very, very circulation. Can't want to say liar. I won't say hundred percent. But some were kind of accurate, so. And he mentioned that I had a problem with my cervix and that kind of thing. So I needed to do a procedure which would help me to conceive once therapy had been done. I asked what the therapy was about, and he said he had to insert like a probe into my reproductive vagina, let me put it that way. Sort of manipulate certain things there before I would be able to conceive. If I was not comfortable with the procedure, but it is said that a woman in labor does not hide her private past from the birth attendant. She was in dire need of a child and had to give in to the requirements of the treatment despite her misgivings about the specialist and the discomfort involved in the procedure. According to him, before the procedure has to be done, you need to, if you are with your partner, your partner has to get you aroused so that your cervix can open. It also sounded strange to me, but I was like, okay, I also want a baby. And if this is what the doctor is saying, of course I need to give it a try. The facility was not conducive for Ifra to be aroused by her husband. But as I later found out, that prescription was a bait, a trap which Jonathan Ohenin Kunim employed in order to violate women who visited his facility. Once the woman could not be aroused, he would then take over that responsibility. He inserted something like a probe. I don't know what it was, 
into me and he kept doing his own thing there. So at a point, he would ask my partner that he probably should go and buy ice block or something. And I realized that it's more like, though he didn't penetrate, it was more like he was trying to have sex with me, trying to play with me. He was trying to play with me down there, getting me aroused and I wasn't feeling comfortable. <laughs>